Alright guys, today we're going to try to show you how to make a carbide cutoff tool on the cheap. Um, currently down, you buy a carbide tip tool like this to do roughing and it's going to run you, you know, 75 to 150 bucks depending on who you buy it from. Um, you can make this tool for less than 20 bucks and you can actually make a couple of them for less than $20. Uh, you go down to Harbor Freight, to your closest Harbor Freight, and they sell a set of four pry bars. Um, they're just typical pry bars in a package. When you get them on the 20% off coupon or on sale, they're under $10 for all four of them. You can buy the carbide inserts from Global Industries uh, for about a little over $5 a piece. So you've got about $10 or $12 invested into a cutter. You're going to need a set of these. You're going to need a cutoff wheel or some way of cutting off the end of the tool. You're going to need a countersink to be able to countersink the hole when you cut and tap it. You're going to need a six, or an 832 tap and drill bit. And you're going to need some 832 flathead cap screws. It's as simple as that. Um, we're going to show you how to make one. We're going to do it real quick so that you get the idea. I already made the bigger one. I'm going to make the medium sized one today. You can also make them if you want, you can make them flat like this, but you can also flip the tool on its side and cut it off here instead, and you get a slight bend in the tool so that you can make it so you can get in behind the edge of the bowl, um, which is what I'm going to do today, is I'm going to make one that will give me a little bit of a, a reach around the corner. Okay, I'm going to do mine with a cutoff wheel, just because I have air here in the shop and I have a cutoff wheel, wheel handy. Um, you could do this with a metal cutting blade, you can do it with a sawzall, you can do it with a hacksaw if you have to. Um, it is a fairly good sized piece of metal, so it does take a minute. Okay, we finished cutting this off. Um, this is the scrap piece that was left over from it. It's still a little bit warm. And that's what the end's going to look like when you get it done. Now we're going to square that up, and because I'm going to put a round cutter head on, head on this one instead of a square, I'm going to form a radius on the end of it. that I've kind of just shaped that with a little bit of a radius. So now we got to put a flat spot into that to countersink the bit. So we want the bit to drop down a little bit into the bottom of it so it's healthy. Okay, so what we've done is we have ground the front end of it and you'll see right here there's a little bit where I've ground off. I actually want to take that down to about the depth of the carbide cutter depending on the cutters that you buy. I tend to take one of the cutters out of the bag and use it to be able to, to figure out my depth. And I want to make that so that it's going to sit down on top of that and it's going to actually sit even with the top of it. Okay, and I'll stop right there so you can see it a little bit better. Now you can definitely see it a lot better than you could before. Uh, and it's showing where it's being cut on that end, where that blade is going to sit. And I'll finish cutting that and then we'll come back to the video. I'm going to switch over to a different sander and grinder that I have because it's a lot more effective. If you have a grinder and a grinding wheel, especially with a coarse wheel, um, it's much easier to grind that than it is to work on it with sandpaper. Um, I was trying to do it with just a single machine and not have to change out machines, but it's all, this machine works much better than that one to do this. So we're going to finish this up this way. And I'll demonstrate it again for a moment, and then I'll go finish it, and then we'll be back. As you can see, that's making it 
a much faster work of what we're trying. Okay, I've grounded about to where I want it to be. I've actually been taking the bit and setting it on there to make sure that I'm getting to about where I want it to be. I've now got it about to the depth that I want. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit here. We want to get it as flat as possible. So we're going to clean it up a little bit, and then we're actually going to take a file and we're going to hand file that perfectly flat. So I've got that good and flat. It's the right depth. It gives me the right amount of, of clearance here underneath so that you can, as you can see, the bit's going to fit on there just perfect. And I'm going to be able to use a square bit if I choose, or a round bit, or a triangular bit, any of the three on here because I ground my bevel back a little bit further. Uh, the only time that it's really important that you butt right against it, like this is showing right here, is so that it keeps this from rotating when you're using a square bit. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna punch this now so that we can drill our hole. Uh, we want to punch right in the center of the radius, right out there. We want to we want to protect our bit, but we also don't want to over. This is a little kit by Champion. You can buy it at almost any tool store. Uh, Six dollars and thirty eight cents. I bought it down at a place called Copper State, State uh, Supply, which is kind of nuts and bolts and taps. I'm sure in your area you have something similar. Uh, you'll get a tap and a drill for that tap in one kit for $7, so it's, it's pretty inexpensive and you can pick up your cap screws while you're there. So we're going to go ahead and drill this hole right down through the center. And we're going to keep our tool flat, and the tool is square anyway, so it's going to lend itself to being flat anyway. So it actually helps you. drill a quick hole and there's the hole in the end of it. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but the hole has been drilled um, and it's right through the end of it. Right okay, so we're going to take our tap, mount it in our tap wrench, tighten that up, and we're going to tap our hole. Very simple to do. Any of you that have tapped anything before, if you haven't, it's not something to be scared of. Um, if it gets tight or starts to grab a little bit, just back your tap off slightly to break the chips and go ahead and keep going through. And we're going to go all the way through. So we got that tapped all through. And I purposely didn't countersink this one yet because I want to show you why you have to do a countersink. So we've left this one where it's not countersunk so I can show you what happens if you don't countersink it with your screws. I'm going to get an Allen wrench we're going to try to tighten that down. And when I go to try to tighten it, because of the bevel that's cut into the bit, I can't get it tight it's going to bottom out on the top of that hole. So you've got to countersink that hole a little bit to accept part of the bevel from the bolt. Um, and that's why you do need to have a countersink. I guess you could use a, a slightly larger size drill bit if you don't have a countersink. I have a countersink, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and use. Go ahead and pull over here again.
And if you'll notice right here, I just put a very slight countersink on that hole where it's been tapped from the top. And now that'll allow the bottom part of my bolt to sink down into the metal and hold it tight against it. So we're gonna put this back on. It also lacks that makes it easier to start the screw as well because it gives you a little bit bigger hole to start it into. Although with my fingers, sometimes I can't get started anyway. So we'll cheat and we'll put it on the Allen wrench first. And we'll get it started down and angle it to where we want it to be and we'll go ahead and tighten that. And as you'll notice that's nice and tight now and the tool is mounted. We've got nice clearance all the way around. I'll be able to put a small round bit on this which is what I actually want to put on this one but I'll also be able to use the square, a triangle. I can also spin the bit. The nice thing about this is there are times when it's really nice to take a square bit and use a corner so I can actually turn it like this and I can use it as a diamond tool to get in so that like when you're doing the bottom flat bottom of the bowl and need to go up against your tool rest you can actually slide in this way instead of trying to cut straight in or try, trying to cut straight across so it comes in really handy it's a very nice tool for basically this is the second one now that we've made out of the set I have a total investment of $25 in three bits and the whole set uh, as well as six dollars for the drill bit so I'm going to end up with three tools I'm not going to use the smallest one I am going to make a small pin turning tool out of the middle of, of the second of the smallest and I'll end up with three very nice carbide tools for a total of investment of under forty dollars okay I'm going to put the round cutter on here so you can actually see it with a round cutter as well so let's go ahead and mount the round cut and you'll see what I'm talking about and there are a couple more things that we need to do to it when we do round um, or the square for that matter, I would do a couple more things to it to finish it off. So let's show you how to finish it off. There's your round cutter mounted on the front of it. And you'll see that it fits perfectly, it overhangs very nicely. It'll get you around the little corner into the bowl, so you're going to be able to get nice into it really sharp. It's a nice tool weight, it's got a nice plastic handle. Um, it actually feels really good when you're turning on the lathe. You're going to be really surprised by how well this tool feels when you're working with it. We are going to take, and if you'll notice, this is a commercial tool that you'll notice they have this rounded off and beveled right here to actually give you a little bit of a rub bevel so that when you're inside the bowl, you're rubbing against it when you're doing a smaller turning. And we do want to add that to the bottom of these, so we do want to make sure that we're grinding that spot. So we're going to go ahead and take the bit back off. And we're going to finish that off right here on the grinder and just kind of polish it up and make it look good. Now that we have everything tapped and everything we know everything fits, now is the perfect time to just kind of finish off. Now we've gone ahead and we've rounded that off so that we get a little bit more of a bevel. And we've got a little bit of clearance so that when we're underneath that bowl and when we're rubbing against that edge, we're going to get a, a nice clean rub. And there you have it. We have a finished carbide turner with a round bit on it that will also accept squares and diamonds. We can put multiple bits on it for less than $20. Okay, we actually just did the math really well on this. 
we wanted to know exactly how, what we were going to have into it. Um, you're going to get four cutters, but you're only going to really use two or three of them. I'm going to math it at two. I'm going to say only the two biggest cutters. So you got five dollars a piece in your handles because you got to divide the ten bucks. That's if you throw these in the trash. You got six dollars a piece for the bits if you go down to AZ Carbide. It's azcarbide.com. Um, they're a company here in Arizona that makes great carbide replacement bits. They fit the easy wood turning tools as well as these tools. Um, they do a real good job. They have great customer service. They'll take good care of you. So, 49 cents for a flathead screw that goes in. So, I've got $10.50 in each one of these tools to create. So, you got a $10.50 carbide tool that has absolutely great weight, great strength, it won't flex, it won't bend, it cuts very well. I'm going to do a demo later in this. You'll see at the very end I'm going to turn a couple of things with it so you can see them in action and see how they work. I don't think you could ever go wrong making one of these guys. Have fun doing it. We'll see you next time with the next tip. Okay, um, I want to take a few minutes and just show you guys real quick how the tool works now that we got it finished. This was the one that we made earlier in the videos. Um, I want to show you how well it works and what it'll do. round block. Now we'll take the other tool and as I was showing you the way we have the hook on it and I've taken the amount of the bit so that it's out of the point. I'll show you why we do that. Um, what I really like about it is instead of feeding straight into a block I can actually work on the block out here. <coughs> 